Well, it's winter again and time to get a new snowblower. So we went with the uh, PowerSmart 7651. It's, uh, the price was unbeatable. The reviews were great. Uh, as They were as good as the much higher priced ones. So we figured we'd give it a shot. It's uh, 24 inches wide and 20 high. As you can see, it's two stage, four stroke engine, uh, electric start, and it also has a manual start as you can see, here's the manual pull, and then there's the push button for the electric. The engine's six and a half horsepower, 212 cc's, as you can see. Um, and then the parachute will rotate. The parachute goes here. I'll, put, I'll show you when we put it together. And uh, it's 180 degrees. It comes almost totally uh, put together for you. Um, just a few things pretty much around the controls just have to be uh, put together in the power chute and controlling the power chute. Uh, it's great because there's no gas or oil mixing. Um, it uh, weighs 180 pounds and uses SAE 530 oil, 87 octane. Uh, one thing I noted is that after 20 hours they, of your first use, they recommend changing the oil. When you get your power smart home, I recommend you go through all the parts. You'll find them in your PowerSmart bag here. Some of the uh, bolts and uh, are actually already screwed into the uh, into the snowblower. You still have to take them out so you can install what uh, what they're supposed to hold. But I took everything off just so I can put it on the table and show you, uh, you know, give you a quick overview, make sure you have everything uh, if you want. These are your these are your keys. Obviously, gas cap. These four. Uh, hold your uh, control uh, bar. This is for your power chute, which is attached. This part is attached, and then you have to attach the longer part right here and screw that in. These are for your, um, they're your skid shoes to, to raise the front so you don't uh, kick in any stones. And uh, these also will hold your, uh, the power, the power bar. Um, I've noticed that what you'll need for attaching things is I've got 5 sixteenths, half inch, 12 millimeter, and also 10 millimeter. And obviously I have my, so my uh, socket wrench. You'll need a Phillips. Okay, let's start putting this together. Okay, we're going to start with the lower handle and then move up to the upper and then the power chute. Uh, as you can see, I put the bolts back in uh, the way it came. These two right here for the lower. And I didn't screw them all the way back in, so we can get them out quick for the video. But that's where you'll find them. That side started. I'll get these in and then come back. Okay, let's finish up on the lower handle. By the way, this takes a 12 millimeter socket for these bolts. All right, there we go. Now we've got to install the upper pretty straight ahead. All right, we've got that all set, all done. Okay, we're gonna install the power chute handle. The bottom shaft comes installed. It's uh, attached with a simple cotter, which I took off just to uh, put all the parts together to show you. There we go. Okay. So that's set. to adjust this to get it just you know right for you this nut is a half inch okay so we've got that in let's get this power chute in And 
this is a 10 millimeter. Okay. She's in. And uh, this, you can change directions how you want it to go. It's got the same kind of hand lever. Here, I'll show you. So you can see you've got these guys. So you can set it to however you want it. It's 180 degree rotation. Pretty cool. Okay, we're going to do the skid plates now. Either half inch as well. That's basically what they're going to look like on, on both sides. Okay, so let's take a walk around. You can see we've got the the uh, skids on both sides. Sorry about that. This is to clear out build up inside. We've got the chute on and it's attached here. Here's all your controls. Let's take a look at those. We haven't done that yet. So here you can see this is where you do all your your gearing. And like I said, you get four, two, uh, two reverse, four forward. This will be perfect for my back surgery. Um, gas. That's on there. So that's where your gas goes, obviously. Again, it's 87 octane. Here's where your oil goes. There is some oil in there. So when you are, if you're taking it home or if it's not being shipped to you, um, just don't tip it because... Uh, even though it's not filled uh, with oil, there's some in there and it will spill. Okay, I've got the oil put in. And uh, here's a tip. Dipstick doesn't read well because the throat is so narrow. So when you're putting in the oil, it, uh, it gets on the, the inside. So two things. First thing is, I put a, a, a little magic marker there so I know where the reed is. And the other thing is, I just carefully put this in just a little bit to try to mop up, block up any of the extra that's on the wall so you can get a better read. Let's see what we got. See, this way I can hold it back. And there we go. We're right at the top. Perfect. Okay, so we're done with the oil. Next, we'll fill up with the gas. And uh, so this will be a true demo of how this is put together and how easily it starts up. Okay, we've got oil. We've got gas. Everything's put together. I double-checked, snugged everything up. I plugged in the cord for the electric start. There's the start button. Now, here are the few things that you need to do to make sure that it works. You can start right. All right, so on the right is your fuel. Right now it's in the off position. So we're gonna set it to the on, which is horizontal. So fuel is now on. Choke should be closed. For starting, once the engine warms up, 15 minutes or, I mean 15 sec uh, seconds, 30 seconds, then you start to move it over to the uh, on position. Okay, and right above here is your prime. And right here is where your key goes. You can't start it without the key, and to stop it, all you have to do is pull out the key, and that'll stop it instantly. Pretty neat feature, I think. All right, let's, let's see what we got here. And we're going to prime it three times. As it is our first time. And let's give it a start.
that was amazing. That was really the first time I turned it on. I didn't turn it on and then try a few times and then, you know, reshoot it. As far as the controls go, you get two reverse, four forward, and very importantly, it says don't change when when the uh, snowblower is moving. So you always want it in a stop position, uh, not turned off engine, but just not moving before you change gears. Your right lever is your throttle. Left is for your auger throttle. Of course, you have your chute, which you can rotate here easily. 180 degrees. And that's basically it. We're in the ready to go position. I've got it in gear one. Keys in, chokes, closed, fuels in the on position, and we're plugged in. choke back where it's uh, it's closed turn off the fuel line and uh, it's ready for storage